This is part two of the Ron Rotorway Exec 162F preflight. I'd like to mention that this uh, video is not intended as any sort of an instructional video. It is specifically for this helicopter and is considered entertainment only. The first thing we're going to do is take a look inside the cockpit, open the seat back, and check the oil. All right, we'll move the uh, seat belts out of the way here. And bring the seat out of the way and open up the inspection panel. Here's the oil sump. This helicopter has a breather tube that comes out of the oil sump and runs up into a loop for condensation purposes and then exits down at the bottom of the aircraft here. And this allows for the oil sump to breathe and most of the stock rotorways just exhaust the fumes into the engine compartment which uh, unless you enjoy smelling oil isn't the best way to do business. All right, let's take a look and see what the oil is. Okay, here's the uh, dipstick. Pull this out and swipe it clean. Snap it back in. Pull it out, take a look at the levels, and the levels are good. The oil is clean. While we're here, we'll take a look at other areas that need consideration, checking for bolts that may be loose, checking for belt tensions, checking for any sort of leaks. Let's take a look uh, up into the engine well here. Okay, using the spotlight, we'll take a look at any areas that may be of concern, make sure the drive belts are clean and oil free. Again, checking that all connections are secure. Okay. All right. So we'll put the inspection panel back on. And then we're going to take off the uh, part of the doghouse, these two inspection panels, and take a look at the engine compartment. All right, we've removed uh, three of the panels from the helicopter for you to get a better look at the uh, engine compartment and the cooling system and the drivetrain. Uh, this is certainly not necessary for a uh, pre-flight, although it never hurts to be totally thorough, there are inspection panels that will allow you to look at the various components, but this certainly gives you a much more open feel for the helicopter and allows you to get a good look at all the components uh, and a nice open view of the entire system. All right, let's take a look uh, at the top of the uh, uh, back of the doghouse here and the first thing we're going to do is take a look in the overflow expansion tank and check the now, fluid level. I normally use a spotlight to take a look inside the, the tank. Usually when I pull the cap off I'll let some of the fluid drip back in that way it moves a bit inside and I can actually see it down there. What we're looking for is that the fluid level comes up to about the top of this tab inside the tank. All right, now, here's another tip. When you put this cap back on, you want to ensure that these tabs are engaged on each side underneath the neck. Uh, there was a case where this cap was not engaged as such and the fluid 
did spill out, got over the drive belts, the helicopter did crash and totally destroyed it. So take a few seconds, make sure everything's properly positioned and set up and you'll save yourself a lot of grief later. Okay, continuing the pre-flight, this helicopter is equipped with the uh, AP Healy Products uh, belt tensioning uh, drive system. Uh, this system was developed by Alba Hunsick up in Red Deer, Alberta, Canada. It's probably the best drive system. Well, actually it is the best drive system on the market. Rotorway has adopted this for use now and purchased the rights to use this on all their newer helicopters. Uh, one of the unique aspects of this drive system is the uh, oil-driven tensioning unit. It does put tension on the drive belt and uh, allows for uh, smoother operation as, as well as uh, less maintenance in adjusting the belt during the various seasons, hot and cold weather. Uh, um, I have used uh, ex uh, extensive uh, products from AP Healy products uh, on this helicopter and uh, consider it to be one of the safest in the air. Uh, there are other products out there you can choose from, but a little word of advice, you better be careful with what you buy. All right, uh, another thing we do is check for belt tensioning. I use an electric clutch on this helicopter. The, the drive system does come with a hydraulic clutch, which I'd recommend purchasing uh, uh, with the unit. I, I'm not even sure you can buy them separately anymore. All right, <clears throat> we're also checking belt tensions on the uh, drive belts, uh, belt tensions for Uh, all the other components that are in use. I don't know whether we'll try to take a look down there. You can't really see anything, but uh, uh, fan, radiator, you're looking for any sort of leaks. Making sure that all components are, <clears throat> are tight. Make sure to torque all bolts at the required times here, here. Now, this helicopter is also equipped with a turbo boost pump. This turbo boost pump sends hot uh, uh, coolant through my heater uh, radiator and blows hot air into the cockpit, which gives me a real nice uh, warm cockpit in the winter. I uh, did some extra welding here and came off the hottest spot on the uh, water and uh, pulled it down through the pump and then I uh, go down this line into my uh, radiator unit. This also has a shutoff valve that is actuated in the cockpit. I think we showed that in uh, pre-flight one. And I'm able to shut this off so in the winter time when it's really cold outside, I don't have the fluid bypassing the thermostat. All right. That pretty much uh, takes care of the uh, inside uh, the engine compartment uh, portion of the of the pre-flight. Now listen, there are lots of other items you can check. This is just kind of a uh, precursor to good operating procedures. So, you know, you set up your, your best way to do your pre-flight and make sure that it uh, meets your needs. And, uh, don't take this necessarily as the gospel for everything. All right, uh, here's another AP Healy Products uh, um, bypass system, coolant bypass system that uh, is an improvement over the stock rotor weight system. Um, one other note is to take a look at the teletemps. Make sure that no dots have been blackened on the secondary unit or that they're not out of spec. Okay. Um, very good. The uh, next video that we're going to do, we'll uh, roll the helicopter out onto the helipad and uh, do an engine startup and engine warm up. Thanks for watching.